us do another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So in this fifth episode, we continue looking at the 2020 Internal Science Paper 2. Remember, it's imperative that you do extensive revision and it is recommended that you do the last four to five years. Look at each question critically and understand on how to answer each question. If you do that, you are guaranteed of a distinction. Let us look at question B4. Table B4.1 below shows the elements in a period of a periodic table. So under table 4.1, we have elements in a period. So they are learning from uh, lithium all the way to a neon. To which period of the periodic table do these elements belong? So what you need to do is you just need to go to the back of the question paper and check where these elements are coming from. So if you go to the periodic table, you will notice that uh, this is a lithium, then this is beryllium, then you end up with neon. So this is the first period, this is the second period, this is the third, fourth, all the way up to the last one. So you notice that this is the second period. So this is period two. Then beam, what happens to the number of shells across the period shown above? So the number of shells determines the period in which a given element belongs. So in this case, the number of shells is constant. So the number of shells is constant. That is to say, they are neither increasing nor decreasing because elements in the same period have the same number of shells. So this is one shell. You notice that hydrogen has got only one shell, also idiom. So idiom, the number of protons they are just like that, which is the same as the number of electrons. Then as you move down the period, the number of shells increases. That's why you are seeing the number of periods increases as you move down the periodic table. Question C, answer the following questions using only the elements shown in the table B4.1. Each element can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Loma number one of sin, which two elements would form an ionic compound? So ionic compound, what you are saying is, is a bonding between a non-metal and a metal. Remember, we have three types of bonding, which is covalent bonding, which is between non-metals. Then we have ionic by sharing, distributing them, the electrons, then this is between non-metal and metal, and then we have metallic, which is between non-metals, metallic, so these are the three. So when you look at this one, one should be a non-metal, one should be a metal. Neon is an inert gas, it cannot form the bond. So what you can do is, you can look at a number of possibilities. So if you look at a lithium, lithium and oxygen can form a bond, which is will be ionic bonding. Then you can have lithium and fluorine. Then you can have beryllium, which is in group two, and oxygen. Then you can also have beryllium and fluorine. So you see these metals and N of these, they can form an ionic bond. Which elements has a valence of three? So when you're talking about the valence, what are we talking about? A valence is a number that tells us how many electrons an atom gains or loses or shares in forming a compound. So we're going to go on the periodic table and check for the groups. So group five elements, 
they are led to gain five electrons to have a complete outer shell. So we have this one, which is a nitrogen one. Then when you come here, do we have N? In this case, we have this boron. So boron is willing to donate three electrons in the outer shell to have a complete outer shell. So in this case, it's either boron or nitrogen. So you see boron or nitrogen. Any of that can, can be used. Loma numero 3 of C, which element has allotropes? So the first thing we need to understand what is an allotrope. So when we're talking about an allotrope, we are talking about uh, different forms of an element. So for example, we have diamond and graphite are all carbons, and these are allotropes of carbon. Then we also have allotropes of oxygen, which are oxygen, gas, and ozone. These are examples of allotropes. So in this case, carbon among these elements, which is this C, as in allotropes, as in two allotropes, which are diamond and a graphite. So take note of these and know their shapes. So this is how you answer this question to get the five marks. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Please join me in the next episode as I look at question B5.